So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So what I have here today is the 2023 Mazda CX-8 all-wheel drive exclusive six-seater. As you can tell already, this is a 2020 model. So shout out to Sir Fernan. He was actually at Mazda Pasig, so he transferred here in Mazda Makati. So his contact details will be right here. And shout out as well to Sir Ralph Huete, my first ever contact here in Mazda Makati. So they actually told me I can still shoot this CX-8 despite being a 2020 model because there are only a few differences between this 2020 and the 2023 model so let's talk about the design of the cx8 so this still inherits the kodo design language of course the 2023 grill looks way better than this 2020 model and still the same like for both model years this still has the sharp cut design here around in the grill this is all chrome too you have led lights all around the main headlight actually dims like in the mazda 3 but not for the repeaters here in the side mirror you still have led fog lamps too and your ground clearance is 185 millimeters so this is 15 millimeters shorter than that of the cx8 front wheel drive model i might have a chance to review a front wheel drive model soon too so stay tuned for that and another difference between both model years are the wheels. To be honest, I prefer these older looking wheels compared with the 2023 model year. So this sits down below the flagship model CX-9. So weirdly, this is the flagship model in Japan because the CX-9 is not being sold there due to that big car excise tax thing, whatever rule they have. I'll just put that in the description down below. So I do like this CX-8 look. It's kind of like a mix of a CX-9, the bigger brother, and the smaller CX-5 model. So yeah, you can tell this is a CX-8 because of the side profile. It is pretty long. Being a 2020 model, this does not have a sunroof. The 2023 model has. And to tell the differences between an all-wheel drive and a front-wheel drive variant, is this roof rails too. This is one of two things you can differentiate between both variants along with the CX-8 all-wheel drive badge here at the rear. And there's a lot of cladding here down below but I don't mind it and you have real exhaust at least. You have LED tail lights as well. Oh yeah, by the way, the ones at front are adaptive by the way, even for the front wheel drive model. So there are just few differences between the all-wheel drive and front wheel drive model. So just check this out they're all highlighted you can pause it here on screen and the difference between a 2020 and a 2023 model this does not have kick to open but at least you still have an electronic tailgate all right it's not as hard as an mg i'm still traumatized with that mg hs anyway back here in the boot so with all of the seats up you have a total of 209 liters which is pretty much on par with this class underneath you have extra storage cx8s do not come with spare tires Yep, correct. There is no spare tires for any CX-8 model. You have grocery hooks here on each side. Getting stuff in and out, yeah, might be an issue, but there is no load lip whatsoever. It is completely fat. And if you fall down the third row, it's pretty easy. Just push these guys. There. So with the third row down, you have a total of 775 liters. And despite being a six-seater van, I thought you cannot fold the captain seats. Apparently, you can. There's just a latch here on the bottom left side or right side, wherever the seat is. And you have a total now of approximately 1,000 plus liters. So at least you can fold them down, unlike some cars that I know that have captain seats. So that's about it with the exterior and the boot of the CX-8. I'll show you the interior. Hmm, I was about to start shooting here. There's actually a 12 volt socket hidden right there. So this is the interior of this 2020 Mazda CX-8 or a Mazda CX-8 in general. Hmm, Alright, that sounds good. So here now in the interior, disclaimer, both 2020 and 2023 models, it's your usual Mazda interior. It is exactly the same. So few differences only between both model years. This still has the DVD player, the 2020 does not have, and absent from this 2020 model, you do not have wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a wireless charging pad itself. But still, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is still present. Again, like I said earlier, it's your usual Mazda interior. It feels very, very premium. Same controls here on the steering wheel. Volume and phone connectivity buttons on the left side and cruise control functions on the right side. So this steering for the 2020 models seems a bit shinier. So the highlight of a CX-8 is actually this. These brown, reddish, Napa leather seats. I mean, they're really nice to sit on. It's very soft and surprisingly, there's, look at that ball sting. 
<laughs> get to that later so usual here you have your heads up display and then your infotainment system for this model it's pretty much the same at least you still have 80 60 degree camera the resolution is all right i guess but at least there is so here in the door usual leather here everything is soft touch there is no plastic whatsoever on this part so the only plastic there is where it holds the cubby space and bottle holder fits my big water jug perfectly too and around here too the two cup holders here and the center console there's chrome around it the plastic grips fits my big water jug perfectly and here on the left side despite this being the 2020 model exactly the same controls here like with the 2023 for your traction control i stop 360 degree view camera parking sensor and your late departure and your electronic tailgate button and to my surprise even the front wheel drive model has some of the features there are only few that have been taken out but still yet again at least there is so the 2020 model has an analog speedometer analog tachometer for the 2023 model the one in the center is now completely digital it looks really really nice disclaimer i'm showing you clips now of the 2023 model so you have your air conditioning vents here the chrome stretches all the way to the passenger side and by the way this is real wood on the passenger side so that's cool so squeegee material all around i can confirm for both model years and then glove box mm, it's kind of small so below the air conditioning vents you have your engine start stop button safety reminders right here and then your air conditioning controls and then you have a pad just down below fits my phone perfectly surrounding the gear lever yeah there is a ton of gloss black but at least the correct position of changing gears so to shift up a gear it's pull and then to shift down it's push very much like a race car and you still have that chrome sport button here only two driving modes normal and sport further down below you have controls here for your infotainment system auto hold function and your electronic parking brake and I said earlier your cup holders here and surprisingly I was expecting a conventional center console box to open like this but this one's a split type so you have two USB ports an SD card and yeah it's kind of small but I don't mind it on the business end of the CX-8 all-wheel drive exclusive are the captain seats so continuous the brown Napa leather there no sunroof for the 2020 model the 2023 model has so the controls up here within both model years are different but still, this one's still LED. I keep forgetting to turn that on. So sun visor, vanity light with mirror, complete. As you can see. Nah, no, don't extend. So going back to the business end of the CX-8, the captain seat. So they're surprisingly isofix anchor points on each side. And then in the middle, you have chrome surrounding the cup holders with plastic grips. Perfectly fits my water jug again. And then on the door itself, the door tabs in the back are much thicker compared to the ones here at front. And I forgot to mention, despite being the older year model, this what I'm in, this still has both speakers all around. There are 10 of these. Hmm. Same with the 2022 model. So in the permanent central console there, you have heating controls there in the middle. So behind this center console box, you have two air conditioning vents and your controls. And surprisingly, the center console box is still split type, but it is much bigger compared to the one here at front. And you can literally fit a big water jug in there. No surprise, being a CX-8, space there in the back is excellent. Feet room, knee room, and head room is excellent throughout. So, on the third row itself, you have cubby spaces and cup holders on each side. Water jug still fits. There's also 2.5 USB ports there in the back. But for this 2020 model, they're not present here. But space there in the back is still good. I mean, my feet room is not the best. But my knee room is alright though. My head room is also. I don't mind sitting there in the back if ever and to my surprise despite this saying a six seater you can actually sit someone there in the middle just in case all Mazda CX-8 models they're the same for the 2020 and 2023 model year it's a two and a half liter four cylinder engine that produces 190 horsepower and 252 newton meters of torque and like all automatic Mazdas this one is mated to a six-speed automatic transmission so I'm expecting this CX-8 to be a little bit more peppy because this one's a bit lighter than the CX-9 itself this is why I'm curious to drive the CX <laughs> Sorry, I got I got lost with the CX there. So I, I'm curious now on how will the CX-8 front-wheel drive will perform because this is somewhat way heavier than that of the front-wheel drive model. And in return, I've never driven front-wheel drive crossovers of Mazda. There have been all all-wheel drive. Before we move on, I need to correct myself. 
this one has an adaptive cruise control so it will work 30 kilometers and above only and for some reason this all-wheel drive van has a larger fuel tank that of the front wheel drive so this one is at 74 liters compared to the 72 of the front wheel drive van let's go for a drive so driving the Mazda CX-8 remember the 2020 model so despite being 15 millimeters less ground clearance than that of the front wheel drive model so going down here of the hill of Mazda Makati no issues whatsoever easy peasy and first impressions immediately with the CX-8 so despite being an all-wheel drive variant this is what I said too with the CX-9 this thing feels pretty light I mean I'm not in sport mode yet but comparing with the CX-9 this one feels just a little bit lighter but still you still feel some weight to it kind of feels planted I'm already doing 40 50 kilometers per hour oh the NVH here solid all right sport mode oh okay sport mode now the sting gets a little bit heavy and <laughs> gets a little bit more punchy Right, feels as sporty as the CX-9, but of course being the CX-8, it's a bit lighter on its feet. That's right. Ah, that's solid. Yeah, this is what I like too with this Mazda, with all Mazda automatic transmissions. Despite being a six-speed, of course the gearing is long, it is very responsive. I mean, it shifts up and down on my command, surprisingly. And over bumpy parts here. Okay, soaks them up pretty well, which I expect for a Mazda. All right, it's a little bit bouncy, but soaks them up still pretty well. So like the CX-9, the ride is very supple, and I gotta say, it can be sporty at the same time. That's what's good with Mazdas. And look here. Uh, put it off from sport and then manual mode for the first gear that's so good so this is also why I wanted a Mazda 3 back in 2020 because of their automatic transmissions they seem pretty good and sir what you CX-9 lang paddles no? meron sir okay so this is the other thing that's different from the CX-9 this does not have paddle shifters but I forgive it because the gear lever is in the correct position for manual mode wow look at that <laughs> I just shifted back to manual kick down immediately oh yeah that's so good and yeah off the line it feels more or less the same like the CX-9 GT that I've driven of course in the corners you can definitely feel the weight and compared to the CX-9 yeah this is much much lighter on its feet so I understand the why people want this CX-8 it's like the best balance of everything I must say compared with the CX-9 and the CX-5 and I gotta compare with some of the PPVs example like a Fortuner so this is almost as the same price as that and knowing still diesel is more expensive than gasoline now I will take happily take this on this CX-8 now the question is would I pick a CX-8 over a CX-9 I might probably will because the CX-9 as much as I love the car and looks way better than this CX-8 this feels a little bit smaller and I don't know much more nimbler to dive around and yet every car review I've seen with the CX-8 I have not heard one bad thing about this this is what's so cool with the CX-8 now I understand now with all of the reviews that this is what the dark horse of the crossover world and probably one of the most popular too You can actually hear the engine screaming. I don't mind that too because it gives it a more sportier character than some of the crossovers which tend to be a bit too quiet and of course some of the crossovers have CVTs. This one's an automatic transmission and some have pumping audio. This does not have it whatsoever. So for once, for the first time in a Mazda, I feel so calm driving this thing. So I guess this is a perfect daily too I must say. So here in the Pasong Tamo Tunnel, very bumpy here. Oh, interesting. So NVH in total, this one is so excellent. Oh, auto dim function, literally just turned on out. So that's also cool. So my friend actually has 
ACX8 front wheel drive so shout out to him I might review that soon too because I really know what the differences are in terms of driving dynamics only between an all-wheel drive and a front wheel drive Ryan so I already love this all-wheel drive but do I need it though maybe of course it might be a little bit more thirstier on fuel compared with the front wheel drive Ryan but surprisingly this one's not too bad at all so with the i-stop off actually it says here on the infotainment it says i've been averaging in this dive alone 7.1 kilometers per liter that is pretty impressive for a big crossover and with this much power too so i understand the people why they prefer the cx8 over the cx9 of course the cx9 will be worlds ahead and despite being a naturally aspirated engine it's pretty solid yeah this is so cool with Mazda like literally every car I've driven they're all peppy they're all fun to drive I gotta say and of course the CX-9 has a turbocharged two and a half liter engine which this is the same but a bit without the turbocharger only still peppy and pretty fun to drive too that's what I like about it I mean look at that I'm just tapping the throttle so eager to move forward I love this Right So I'm very curious now on how will the New CX-5 Turbo will drive and a new CX-9 But more or less it could be the same But I'm very curious because those have turbocharged engines This one does not So I understand now why my friend bought a CX-8 front wheel drive Compared with the four all wheel drive I'll ask him soon Because I want to share also his experiences with the Mazda CX-8 and of course being a Mazda, why it's also tempting for me to get one because of their 5 years free PMS even for an MX-5, that's the one I actually like <laughs> so of course the price of these two that's why I mentioned the Fortuner LTD and what the CX-9 because for 40,000 pesos more you already can get a base CX-9 so I understand why people tend to get more of the CX-9 because that has it's a bigger car and has more space despite also 7 seats compared to the 6 of this I see why the front wheel drive van is a little bit more of a popular choice because that's a whopping 160,000 pesos less compared with the all wheel drive van so it, either way I think just go any with the CX-8s because they're pretty good this has also been acclaimed by the one himself, Kako Teona. Now I understand why. Let's start one more time. Oh, sheesh, that's so quick. Right. Probably have a new dim crossover. But the thing is, I want to know what the front wheel drive is like. So I know which variant to get in the future. So, that concludes my review of this Mazda CX-8. I'd like to thank Mazda Makati, Sir Ralph Huete, and Sir Fernan over here. Hope you guys like and subscribe, and I will see you with more future car reviews. Of course, here being Mazda Makati, uphill test. Justin Drive. Easy peasy. Bye-bye.